Ortiz Narracourt Beef Processing Facility on the limestone coast of South Australia is one of the largest energy consumers in the region. And it comes at a cost, $240,000 a month to be precise. Going back a couple of years ago, unfortunately South Australia had a really big blackout across the network and as an outcome out of that, the government supported the, the local state government here to have an energy productivity program to help businesses combat any issues around blackouts going to the future. We were successful and, and lucky enough to partner with SA Government, allowing us to implement the cogen to couple with this biogas farm so that we could use that energy converted to electricity and heat, which is really advantageous for a meat processing facility that requires refrigeration and steam as well for its processes. This is the first time that teas will utilise biogas from a cow for fuel in a cogeneration plant. The new cow is 25 million litres and has about a 15 day retention time. Across that period we hope to achieve about 90% COD reduction and that means maximum realisation of the biogas yield or that wastewater. Primary treatment was important to get right to ensure that we get the maximum life and biogas recovery from the anaerobic lagoon downstream. It involves the coarse recovery of grit as well as fats, oils and grease and we do this by utilising screw presses for paunch dewatering and a DAF system for grit and fat recovery. The CAL's multiple inlet design allows for better utilisation of the storage area and mixing to ensure efficient COD reduction and conversion of energy in the water to biogas. The biogas we do generate is about 70% methane, so quite high energy content. It does also include H2S, so that we could use that biogas in the cogen system, there's some levels of conditioning that's required. The site utilises knockout pots and biological scrubbing to remove H2S before combustion. The whole project was strategically timed, with the previous conventional open to atmosphere crusted anaerobic lagoon reaching the end of its usable life. It had accumulated some bottom solids and had accumulated a thick surface crust as well, so that reduced the hydraulic retention time of the wastewater. So we proactively planned to replace that with the cow. The project was not without its challenges. The management of materials, contractors and construction had to be carried out with minimum disruption to the facility. There's a lot of pre-work need to be done. We need to diverting all the flow of the previous wastewater to make this possible. So there was some challenging working around the, uh, the clocks and working around the site operation hours to get it done. One of the key learnings we've had out of this project is engaging and partnering with the local network authority to make sure that the cogeneration engine is integrated correctly, it's working in a safe manner, and that's a process that end users need to go through to make sure that they can connect to the grid. And so it's just allowing appropriate timing around commissioning and connections and things like that to make sure that we do go through the required processes and the engineering that goes with that. The meticulous planning and project management has paid off, delivering a raft of environmental benefits, including the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and odour emissions, plus built-in leak detection function and sludge removal. The commercial benefits stack up too, with a significant reduction in total manufacturing costs for the facility. and gives the community the confidence that Tees is here to stay, here for the long haul. For Tees Narracourt, this project is just the beginning of their renewable energy journey, promising the facility and the community it supports a cleaner, greener future. <laughs>